started. We want to welcome you to this uh, program of the University of Arkansas Small Business and Technology Development Center. We are always pleased to be able to bring you these educational programs to help support you and your small business. Please be advised that we are recording this conversation for ASB TDC education purposes. Um, you will be able to access the recording all at, and all of the past workshops and webinars at our website, and I will post a link here momentarily. I will introduce our presenter, Chris Kays, momentarily, but first I'd like to introduce us and tell you a little bit about ASB TDC. I'm Amy Robinson. I am here and a, a consultant, especially consultant with ASB TDC. And if you don't know about the Small Business, Center, a Small Business Development Center, Chris, I've been saying ASB TDC every day for like a year, 18 months. And <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> but we are a one-stop shop for startups and small business, existing small businesses. We are associated with the University of Arkansas and affiliated with the SBA and the statewide ASB TDC. We also are part of a national network of more than a thousand small business centers around the country. So you can find one of us almost anywhere you go. Locally, we offer um, complimentary, no cost to you, all the words that say free, one-on-one -on -one consulting and programs like this one. We cover relevant topics for business owners. And if you're not already a client, we encourage you to visit us at ASB or at sbtdc.uark.edu. So um, we want to um, thank everybody for being here today. Today, we are bringing you Chris Case, and she is going to tell us all about Microsoft Excel Basics. <laughs> it is a 101 course, and you're going to learn everything you need to know. We really want, please engage with us via the chat and the Q&A. Chris um, and I will both be monitoring and facilitating this as we go along. Please note that you have the ability to be anonymous in Q&A, but not in chat. Um, you can also send us, the panelists, um, an individual message if you just want to keep it between us and there. And we'll, again, we'll be monitoring both. So thank you again for being here. And without further hesitation, I'm going to turn it over to Chris to get us started. Great. I'm on the other end of this, Amy, this time, instead of um, facilitating with you. So this is kind of fun. So but fun. Um, hi, everybody. I would love um, for you to just chat in the chat box. You know, this is Excel 101, but I would love for you guys to let me know just how much of a beginner you are. We have a lot. We've got five or six more of these coming. So I'm going to do one on formulas. I'm going to do one on using it as a database feature. So um, make sure you check that out also. But before I share my screen, I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of um, my love for Excel. I'm an Excel nerd. I'm one of those that um, kind of a closet Excel fan, I, I love it. Um, I, I work with it in so many different ways. But back in the early 90s, I was actually teaching computer classes. I was teaching Lotus, Quattro Pro, DOS. And then that's when Microsoft actually started sending out sales reps to people like me and saying, hey, we really want you to represent our products. And so um, from the very, very beginning, I fell in love with um, Microsoft and not only Word, but Access and, and Excel and so forth. So, um, but with Excel, you can do so many different things with it. And I think we forget about that. We can not only crunch numbers, but we could keep track of data also. So for example, with my Christmas cards, I've got an Excel spreadsheet where I've got all of my names of my friends and families that I spend um, or send Christmas cards to every year. And then when it comes around that time, I'll edit that list, add a couple more names, and then I mail merge it with Word and print them on um, the, the envelopes or on labels. And so I really want you guys to know that Excel is not only just kind of a, a, a calculator on steroids, you can use it for a lot of different things. Okay. Chris, I would so, love to um, have everybody add that, um, kind of how you're using it. Um, you're welcome to share what kind of business you're in, but maybe just how you think you'll be using it um, in your business. That's a great, great point, Chris. That is a really good point. And also what I'm going to do too is I, I really want to hear your questions, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the first part of this, the presentation. And so we're going to go through all of what I've got here on my list to, to cover. And then I'm going to leave the second part open for any questions. I also want you to know, Amy's going to make sure to share my email address because your questions are going to come up when you guys start using Excel or start an, a new um, spreadsheet. And that's when I want you guys to know that you have access to to email me that spreadsheet, to, 
to um, meet with me and, and figure out how to do some, some other things. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And you can still see us on there. Um, I have not opened up Excel yet. One of the things um, with, with all the programs are there's so many different ways that you can open it up. So you'll kind of have to figure out what's what you like the most. I've got Excel as a little button, a little shortcut down on my taskbar down at the very bottom. So that's how I open it. Some of you guys will go over here to the start button and open it. So it doesn't matter. There's not a right or wrong way to open it as long as you open it. It is, is the right way and you're into the program. This is the first screen that it will show you. And so I'm really on my home screen. It's asking me, what do I wanna do? Do I want to start a blank worksheet? So here I could click on this or I could also click on the new button. Or do I wanna open up an existing Excel spreadsheet? You'll notice over here, I've also got a list of all the recent Excel spreadsheets that I've opened up and I can just click on one of them there too. So like I said earlier, there's gonna be a different um, set of steps to open up everything and you're gonna have a lot of options of how, how to do that. So for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and just double click on this blank workbook and I'm in my Excel workbook. What I wanted to do first is I kind of wanted to go over the different parts of the screen, um, the, the vocabulary and make sure that you guys understand all of that. At the very top, you'll notice you've got what we call a menu bar. And the menu bar has some shortcut buttons on there. It's got the save button. It's got the undo and the redo. In one of the Excel classes, I'm going to actually show you how to add all the buttons up there that you want to. So if you want to quickly print, you'll be able to click up here. And again, you can also do it a, a number of different ways. But for me, it's just really nice to have all the buttons right up here or to know the keyboard shortcut. But this is your menu bar. You'll also notice it says book one dash Excel. If it says book with any number behind it, more than likely you have not saved it. So until I save this and give it its own name, it's going to say book one. Now, if for some reason I open up a new workbook again, right now, as I'm, I'm talking to you guys, it might say book two. Don't worry about the number behind that. Just know that more than likely you haven't saved it, okay? Then over on the very right-hand side, you've got the, the buttons to um, close or to restore or to minimize, okay? Chris, I was so gonna... that's your... Sorry, Chris. Amy. Yep. I was just going to um, a technical um, moment. Um, you all are on your computers right now in front of your screen. And sometimes uh, Zoom takes up your entire screen um, and so that you can't see the other screen. So if you're trying to follow along with a, an Excel sheet that while Chris is doing this, which is very, very helpful, um, if you if the full screen has been taken up by Zoom, if you kind of hover over where you are right now and just press um, escape, or there's a little bar in the corner that says um, full screen or escape full screen, um, then it'll go down and then you'll be able to kind of side by side be looking at your Excel sheet while you're seeing what Chris is showing you um, along. You can kind of split your screen. I know that that was um, sometimes confusing for me when I was trying to do something on my computer if I didn't have two screens. So I thought I'd remind everybody of that. Okay, good. Thank you, Amy. And please interrupt me because I've got my screen full um, and maximized. And so, Amy, I cannot see you on here. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that too. So please feel free to interrupt me. Oh, you know, me. I have no problems doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't ever have problems interrupting each other. I don't raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guys, right below your menu bar, you've got this other, um, it's the ribbons. So each one of these, like I'm on the home ribbon right now. If I click on insert, you'll notice all of those buttons will change because I'm on the insert ribbon. There's a draw ribbon, a page layout ribbon, a formulas ribbon, and on and on and on. So if I go back here to the home ribbon, this is where we're going to spend the majority of the time today. So I'm going to really familiarize you with a lot of these buttons, but we're just going to create just the basic worksheet today. We're going to add formulas and some formatting and, and so forth, but um, we're not going to really get to any of those other ribbons. But if you don't know Excel, it's really, really important for you to familiarize yourself 
with what's in these other ribbons. Don't worry about if you don't understand, for example, what slicer is down here at the, at the end. If you kind of hover on that button, it will come up with a description of what a slicer is. And we will talk about that in, in the formulas class. But don't worry about, you know, understanding what each one of these buttons do, just kind of familiarizing yourself with what Excel can do for you, okay? You've got the, also the file ribbon. When you click on file, this is where I get back to the original screen when we started. So if I wanted to start a whole new workbook or to open up something, I can go back there to the, the file. Okay, so these are your ribbons. And each ribbon has just a, a bunch of different buttons. What Microsoft tried to do is they tried to put on, like, for example, the home ribbon, a lot of the most common um, features that we use in Excel. And so they might not always have everything we need right here. I'll show you how to get to some more stuff. But just know that this isn't all of Excel. You can do um, a lot more in Excel than, than what's up here on the screen right now. Now also notice if I hover over one of these buttons, again, like I did earlier with the slicer, it tells me what that button does. So this B button, it makes my text bold. But I want you guys to also see that on some of these buttons, it will give you the, the keyboard shortcut. So for bold, it's control if you hold down your control key and hit your B key on your keyboard at the same time, that's the keyboard shortcut. Once again, there are so many different ways of doing the same thing in Excel. You just kind of need to figure out what is best for you. It might be clicking on this button. It might be memorizing some of the, the keyboard shortcuts. For example, again, control B. So it's completely up to you. But just know that either way you do it, it is the, the right way. It, it's just going to be a, maybe a, a two or three different ways of doing the same thing. Now also notice that in each one of these sections, and you can see the vertical line, I've got a clipboard section of shortcut buttons. I've got a font section of shortcut buttons, alignment, and you can see you keep going over. What I wanted to show you guys is the bottom right-hand corner of that section of each one of those, you'll see a little dialogue box. It's just a little box with an arrow in it. If you click on that, you get to even more options. So again, all these buttons that you guys can see right now, there are more options, even more than that, that you can get to. We're not going to jump that deep in today, but I just wanted you guys to know, and let me just hit cancel down here. I just wanted you guys to know that if you did want more options than what you can see right there, you can click on any one of these little dialogue buttons and it will get you even more options. Okay. Right below that, we've got the formula bar. And this is the bar where you'll see if I type something in a cell right now, it automatically appears in the formula bar. So that's where when we get to this, that's where I'll edit. If I've maybe misspelled something, that's where I'll look at a formula because even if the number shows up out here, the actual formula will show up in the formula bar. So I'm just going to hit escape the escape key at the top left-hand corner just to get out of that. So I'll, you'll see later on when we create a spreadsheet what we're going to do in the formula bar. Now down here, a spreadsheet in Excel, it's made up of columns, rows, and cells. And so here you've got column A, column B, column C, and then you've got rows one, two, three, and I can go on and on and on. Why I'm telling you this is because a lot of times when, when, especially in the other classes that we'll be working in, I'll ask you to click in a cell. So for example, click in cell A1. It's the intersection of the column and the row. There's C1. Here's A4. Here's B4. So the cells are the combination of the, the, the intersection of the column and the row, okay? So there's, I'm back up in A1. Then at the very bottom, you'll see where it says, there's a little tab that says sheet one. This is something that I did not understand for the longest time when people would talk about workbooks and worksheets. The overall file is a workbook, but within that workbook, you can have several sheets. So let's say, for example, you are keeping track of all of your sales for the year. You might have just one workbook 
which is this whole file that's maybe saved as um, sales-2021. But inside this workbook, you're going to want to have 12 different tabs, one for January, and then you can also add another one here, maybe February, and add another one, and I could, I could keep adding them. In the next um, Excel 2, I'm going to show you guys how to add more workbooks, how to rename them, how to move them. But just know that the overall workbook is the file. And each one of these within here is a sheet. And you can have a slew of sheets. Okay. Then one more thing I want to show you about the screen and then I'll move on. Down at the very, very bottom, you've got this bar. And this is where you can kind of maximize and, and zoom in and zoom out. It does not change how the data is printed. But I'm a little bit older and my eyesight is not as great. So I will click on the plus down here to kind of zoom in. And I'm going to do that for you guys right now, too, so you can see it a little bit better. But there's the plus to zoom in. And then there's the, the minus to zoom out. And again, this does not affect the printing. It, the bigger it gets here is just viewable. It's not for the printing part of it. Okay. The next thing I want to go over are the different mouth symbols. So you notice with your mouse, you've got a left mouse button and a right mouse button. You're going to be using the left mouse button 99% of the time. The right mouse button, and I'll get to that in just a little bit, but it's a shortcut menu. Again, remember how I said there's so many different ways that you can do the same thing in Excel. The right mouse button is a shortcut menu wherever you click on. So I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. Notice my mouse symbol right now is a fat white plus. That means it's in the selection process. So it's a selection mouse. If I want to click inside of a, a cell, I can click on that cell. I can highlight cells. Now, I haven't typed anything in here yet, but this is where I can highlight cells and maybe I want to bold them. But it's that fat white plus. Then you'll notice when you get up here on either any of the column headings or the row headings, you've got a black arrow. That's a quick way to select the entire column. Or I can just click, hold, and drag and select all four of those columns. The same way with rows. I can select a row when I'm clicking on the heading part of it and I've got that black arrow. Okay? Then you'll notice if you get on any of the lines that separate the columns or the rows, you've got a double headed black arrow. That's how you're going to resize rows and columns. So, for example, column A, I want to make a little bit wider. I'm going to make sure that my mouse symbol is that double-headed black arrow, and I'm right here up in the column headings. I'm right on that line in the gray area. Now I can click, hold, and drag to resize that column. Or again, if I want to highlight three columns and resize them at the same time, so there we go. Then I can highlight those and then just click, hold, and drag to resize three columns at once. Okay, there's a shortcut for just about everything in Excel. And that's why I'm going to make sure that Amy gets you guys my, my email address. Because if you feel like you're wasting a lot of time doing anything in Excel, there is always a shortcut way of doing that. So I want to make sure that you guys can reach out to me anytime with any shortcuts. Absolutely. Okay? You also have, um, you have uh, Chris's email address as well as a way to become a client. She's one of our consultants. So you can get to her two different ways and an entire team <laughs> if you want. Absolutely. We've got a great team that offers a, a lot of stuff. But, um, and then I've, I'm going to create this spreadsheet in just a little bit and I'll show you one more mouse symbol. But you'll notice at the bottom, if I hover over the bottom right hand corner of that cell, it's a solid black plus. I'm going to show you a little trick. It's the autofill feature. And again, like I said earlier, if you find yourself taking a lot of time um, doing anything in Excel, there's always a shortcut. And I'll show you that little tip in just a second. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I want to make sure that I just enter in just a basic um, information in here. I'm going to type in, and I'm going to type in slow for any of you guys following me, but I'm going to create a spreadsheet that's the animal shelter because I'm working at the animal shelter, I'm volunteering there, and I want to make sure that we keep track of how many dogs that we um, uh, people adopt, how many cats, and how many birds. I'm just going to have those three different categories. So I typed in animal shelter, 
And I can either, again, use my mouse if I want to click inside of the next cell that I want to type in, or you can use your arrow keys on your, your keyboard. So I'm just, I'm a mouse person. I'll usually just click in the next cell that I'm going to type my, my information. So here I'm going to type in, we have dogs at our animal shelter. We have cats and we have birds. Okay, so I just typed those three in right there. And again, remember earlier when I was talking about the formula bar, let's say for example, I just wanted to say dog. Notice when I click on that cell up here, it has what I typed in that cell. I can just click right there in backspace and delete it from right there. So I do a lot of my editing right here in the formula bar. You can also double click with your left mouse on that cell to get inside that cell to edit it too. Then I'm gonna keep track because right now this is quarter one information. So I'm gonna type in January. But remember how I told you that there was gonna be a shortcut with that little autofill button? Instead of typing in January, February, March, Again, this is why the mouse symbols are so important. I'm gonna hover my mouse on the bottom right-hand corner of that cell until I can see that solid black plus. And then I'm gonna click, hold, and drag over two cells. And it will automatically fill in February and March. And if I kept dragging, it would be April, May, June, July, August. So we would keep filling it in. This is something that I'm gonna show you guys even in, in more in depth in the second one, how to do the autofill button with numbers and dates and, and days of the week, and even maybe something that you've customized, like maybe um, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. You can do it with any combination of, of any number and text. It will usually just pick up on it, or you can highlight two cells and, and drag it. But Again, I'm jumping way ahead there. We'll, we'll cover that in the second session. Just know again, let me just highlight these two and I'm gonna hit the delete key. I'm gonna click on January again to show you the autofill. So I clicked on it. My mouse has got to be that solid black plus at the bottom right hand corner. And then I'm gonna hold down my left mouse button and drag it over to. And again, for now, if you just wanna type in February and March until we get to the next class, that's fine too. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in some numbers. I'm just gonna make these up as I go. I'm really basic here. Okay. So you'll notice here, I've, I've got numbers typed in. And for that, because I was just typing, I kept my hands on the keyboard and just used my arrow keys. But you can also click using your mouse to get inside of each one of those cells that you wanna type information in. Okay, so I've got a lot of my data typed in at this point. I'm usually gonna save my spreadsheet because I don't wanna lose it. And I can make a lot of mistakes in, in Excel. I don't wanna lose it. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. You can either do control S for save, and I'm going to cover some more keyboard shortcuts at the end. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on file from up there at the menu. And then I'm going to click on save. Now, let me explain the difference between save and save as. The first time you save an Excel spreadsheet, they have the same job. They do the same thing. They allow you to give the file a name and they allow you to save it somewhere in your computer where you want it. But after you've saved it, save and save as take on two different roles. Save just automatically updates it and it doesn't give you an option if you click on save. It just updates any information that you've typed in. If you want to save it as a different name, so you maybe have a copy of that file or you, you just want two, two of the same thing, that's when you'll click on save as. And again, I know I'm covering a lot. That's why I want to make sure you guys get my email address because um, there, there's going to be some more explaining to do with some of these. But I'm going to click on save at this point. And then it's asking me where I want to save it. Now, as a default for most of you guys, it will automatically save it into a folder that's already created called documents. For me, I want to save it in a different folder so I'm just going to click on browse. And what I will do is take me to a window that has all of my folders and, and 
where I can save it to. I'm going to double click on Chris because that's where I want to save it. And then remember down here, the file name for a default, it has book one or book two. It's, it's got the, book, the word book with any number behind it. I want to save it as a different name. So I'm just going to highlight that and I'm going to type in animal shelter. And then 2021 QTR1. Again, it, it's up to you how you guys name it and where you save it to. But as a default, it will save it into a folder called documents for most of you guys. So after I've given it the name, I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And notice now up on my title bar at the top, it doesn't say book one anymore. It says my name. So that's the name of my, my document that I just saved. Okay. Okay. So after this, I just want to do a little bit of formatting and then I'm going to show you guys some formulas and how to move and, and insert rows and columns. But so to to format this, what I want to do is animal shelter. I'm going to click inside of cell A1. I want to make that bold and I want to make it larger. Now, remember, here's the section where all your font options are that you're most commonly going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click on B to bold it. And again, if you're a keyboard person, control B will also bold it. I'm going to come over here and the size of my font right now is 11. I can either click on that A, the bigger A, to make it larger. Every time I click, it goes up two. I can also make it smaller by clicking on the smaller A. Or you can even click on the drop down arrow and select size if you already know what size you want to make it. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it a 14. Then here, I want to go ahead and highlight January, February, and March. And I'm going to also bold that. And then dogs, cats, and birds. And remember, again, my mouse is that fat white plus. So I'm just highlighting. I click, hold, and drag. And all three of those cells are highlighted. And I'm going to go ahead and click. Yeah. So, Chris, I was just going to let you know this was a lot of fun, first of all, having a good time <laughs> over here. Um, but I also was going to let you know that I did ask a question about what everybody is using this for, because um, as you were going into the world of cats and dogs, I was just curious and, um, you know, budgets or inventory or customer tracking. And we have a lot of people using it for budgets, a lot of numbers, people and, um, you know, with our with our financial boot camp coming up and some of those other things, I think a lot of people have budgets on their mind. It's, it's only halfway through the year. Right. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that that's uh that's what a lot of people are going to be using it for okay good well i'm going to make sure you guys because i do want to cover um six formulas with you guys today so i think that's going to be really beneficial for crunching numbers and keeping track of, of the financial part of your business so this is kind of just the fun part you know you can highlight and, and you can change maybe if it's bold or italicize you know just changing the way it looks one thing that you'll probably want to do, especially if you guys are crunching numbers, is you're going to want to insert rows or columns. And so notice right here, maybe I want to insert a blank row right above my titles, January, February, and March. That's when you can right click. Remember I told you the mouse button, the left mouse um, button does 99% of the job. That right mouse button will always get you a shortcut menu for wherever you right click on. So I'm going to right click right there on the number two, that row heading number two. And here's a shortcut menu. This is where I can insert a row. I can delete a row. I can also do a lot of other things, but this is how I quickly insert a row. If I wanted to delete that row for whatever reason, I could do the same thing. I right click on that and then I hit delete. Okay, so let me go back in. I'm going to insert this again. I just think it looks a little bit better when I insert that. Okay, so again, that right mouse button, let's say, for example, I want to right click. I want to change something about January. If I right click on January, it gets me a menu with all the options of what I can do for that particular cell. Now, January is not a big deal. I'm just going to leave it bold, but there's mouse um, keyboard shortcuts. There's the right click. There are um, the menu bar. 
So like I said before, there's a million different ways to do things. You just need to kind of figure out if you're more of a keyboard person, if you like these shortcuts up here or even right clicking. OK, I kind of if you'll notice, I do a combination of all three. But um, just know that because I get that question a lot. Well, if I bold it here, is it doing the same job as if I hold down control B? Yep, it's doing the same thing. OK. So what I want to do, because I want to make sure that I leave enough time um, at the end of class too, I really want to jump into formulas because I think this is going to be one of the things, especially if you guys are creating financial documents, that's one of the reasons you're using Excel is to use it as kind of a, a calculator on steroids. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got one that I've already created. You guys can stay in that file, which is just fine. But I've got a, a file that I already created before class today called formulas. Okay, so my formulas was just what I had before, but I've now I've got some other columns that I've added that I want to make sure that you guys know how to sum, subtract, multiply, divide, and even average. One thing you'll notice is my my um, numbers in here. Before I I opened up this one, it just said eleven twenty two, you know, and just the plain number. What I ended up doing is I wanted to change how it looked. And so I highlighted these rows, these cells, and then I came up here and I changed what I wanted it to look like. If I want it to be more of a dollar, maybe it's not the number of dogs that we had adopted, it was the, the amount, the, the, the um, dollar amount. So you can just highlight those. Maybe I just wanna take it back to without the dollar amount. And again, here's more buttons I can either add more decimals or take away less. And this is one of the things I really think you guys need to do. Just get a, a, a dummy worksheet like this and just kind of play around a little bit and then keep track of some of the things that you're having hurdles or troubles with and, and then contact me and we can we can go over that. But a lot of people will turn things on and not realize, you know, like the I'm going to add the dollar symbol and they don't know how to turn it off. One thing, if you just did it, the undo, remember that button right up here on your title bar? That is my best friend in all of these um, applications. The undo will undo the last thing that you've done. And then if you keep undoing, it will go step by step. But the undo button is really helpful because by accident, a lot of times, all of a sudden I've done something and I wiped out the whole spreadsheet. Well, if you undo, it's probably you accidentally had highlighted everything and hit the space bar or you've done something just simple like that. So the undo button is really, really key. The keyboard shortcut for undo is control Z. So you'll use that quite a bit also. Those are really okay. two key things. Number one, dummy worksheet. That is what I need. <laughs> and number two, undo. Very, very, very key. <laughs> I'm Amy, I use undo a million times in, in the I wish I could use and, it in my life. Undo, undo, undo. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> I know it. That would be the, the best invention ever. Okay. So what I want to do next is I want to calculate all three of these and I want to get a total. I just called it sum, but um, I want to get a total right here. So with any formula, you always click inside the cell where you want your answer to be. So any formula, first step is click inside an empty cell where I want my answer to be. So this is where I want my answer to be with the 11, 22, and 33. I want those added up. I want my answer to be here. Then what I'm going to do, again, I'm still on my home ribbon. If you'll notice at the very far right-hand side, there is a little symbol. It's the, the sum symbol. If you click on that button right there, it will go back and it will highlight what it thinks that you want to add. So for Excel, it will automatically start kind of disco dancing around the cells that are above it or to the left of it. So it thinks it's kind of pretty smart. It's, think, it's thinking, OK, here's where you want your, your answer to be. Probably you want those three cells over to the left. And I do. So I'm just going to leave it kind of disco dancing around that. And then you can either hit the sum button again or the enter key on your keyboard. And there's your answer. Okay, let me do that again, even though I'm going to show you a quick shortcut of how to copy that down. 
But step number one with any formula, I'm going to click inside of the empty cell where I want my answer to be. And since I want to sum this, there's a really quick shortcut button right up here to the right. I clicked on it once. It's selecting or disco dancing around the cells that it thinks I want to add. Those are correct. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that sum button again. And then remember that auto fill button? Remember when we did January, February, and March? This is one of the best and quickest ways to copy formulas. So I don't want to redo that every single line. After I do it one time, let me just delete this one so I can show you. I usually just do one formula and then I'll grab that autofill button. And again, my mouse is that solid black plus. I'll click, hold, and drag down. And it will automatically, it knows to adjust my formula based on where um, it, it copied the, the answer into. Okay. Let me delete. I'm going to delete all those. Let's say, for example, and this is another thing, since a lot of you guys are being, you're calculating numbers and so forth. Let's say for whatever reason, I want to add 11 and 33. I want cell B3 and D3 added together. How do I do that? So again, step number one, I'm always going to click inside of the empty cell where I want my answer to be. And this is still summing. So I'm going to click on the sum button up here. But instead of all three of those, what I'm going to do is with my mouse, I'm going to click on the first cell that I want to add. I'm going to hold down my control key and click on the second cell that I want to add. Okay, so your control key is a very quick quick way to select non-adjacent cells that you want to add. And then again, since I've selected those, I can click on the sum button again, and there's the answer. Okay, let me do that one more time because this is something you will be doing quite a bit. Your data might not be nice and neatly um, at, on top of where you want to add it or to the side. It might be kind of all over. So step number one, you click inside of the empty cell where you want your answer to be. Step number two, you click on the sum button. Step number three, you click on the first cell that you wanna add, and then you hold down the control key. And step number four, you click on the other cells that you wanna add. So if I wanted to add maybe four, I just hold down that control key and click on those four cells wherever they are in the spreadsheet. And then I'm gonna click on the sum button again. And there's my answer. And then if, again, if I wanna copy this down, I just use my autofill handle and drag it down. And notice this one, again, the formula bar is gonna show you the actual formula. This one took cell B4 and added D4. This one took B5 and added D5. So if you'll notice again, each one of these formulas You'll see right up there in the formula bar what they're doing, okay? Let me show you these others. And then what I wanna do is make sure that we have enough time. I've got about 20 minutes left, but I wanna make sure you guys can ask specific questions. One of the things that I did up here, you'll notice in the red, these are the symbols on your keyboard that will add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Now the adding, the summing, I just use this button up there but you can also do what I'm about to do in creating a formula. But I just use that button because they've already got it as, as a shortcut. So again, with any other formula, step number one is you always click inside the empty cell where you want your answer to be. And then on my keyboard, because there's not a shortcut to subtract and multiply up here quickly, I'm gonna do it on the keyboard. So I'm gonna hit my equal key on my keyboard. Anytime you start with an equal, it indicates to Excel that you're starting a formula. So it's now in formula mode. And I want to go ahead and I'm just gonna take this cell. So I'm gonna click on my cell. I'm gonna do the little dash for minus, just like I did right there, that red in parentheses. And let's say for whatever reason, I want to subtract this from that. So I'm taking equal E3 and subtracting D3 and then I'm gonna hit the enter key. And then I can click on that again, use the autofill handle to copy that down. Now let's do, I'm gonna do the multiplication and the division. It's the same exact steps. It's just a different symbol. 
So step number one, click inside of the cell where you want your answer to be. Step number two, hit the equal key on your keyboard. Step number three, click on the first cell that you want. And again, this makes no sense. I'm just clicking on two cells to add them together or to multiply them together. So I'm gonna click on that cell. Here's the symbol that I typed up there for you guys to easily see, it's the little asterisk. So if I wanna multiply, I'm gonna type the asterisk. I'm gonna click on the second cell and hit the enter key. Now. You can also, here, let me delete this for just a second. You can also multiply it by another number. You don't have to multiply or do all of this for um, if this information is right there in the cell. Let's say I want to, I'm gonna do the equal. I wanna click on this cell and I wanna multiply it by 0 0.10. Again, for whatever reasons, you guys are gonna have your own calculations that you wanna do, but it's 0 0.10. I'm going to hit enter, and there's 10% of that, and I'll just copy it down, okay? So no matter what, it's the same four steps. You click inside of the empty cell where you want your answer to be. You hit the equal key. You click on the first cell, and for this one, div division is the slash, and I want to divide that by, I'm just going to say two. I'm going to divide it in half. And then I hit the enter key and there's half of 11, half of 44 and half of 77. Okay. Again, I know I'm throwing a lot at you guys, especially if you have not done formulas before, but I wanted you to kind of just get the concept of it right here. I wanted you guys to see that how easy it is to do a formula and then copy it down or copy it to the right. The steps, don't worry about those. That's what I can send you in an email and, and, and walk you through. Don't worry so much about the steps other than just the formulas. To do any formula is really that easy. Okay. If anybody's I'm, panicking right now, I'm also going to interject and um, put a link in here that um, lets you know that where you can find a recording of this, that you can go back and watch it again and again and again. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I've got so many documents and stuff to you guys. If you guys are interested in formulas, I can send you um, quick steps of how to do formulas, how to, um, how to format in, in different ways. Now, keep in mind, you guys, again, this all my changes I've done up to this point have not been saved. I'm going to go ahead and click on the save button and watch. It doesn't look like it does anything at all, but it just updated everything because remember the save and save as do two different things after you've given a file its name the save just automatically updates it with all your little changes save as allows you to go out and save it as a different file name maybe save it on a, a, a um, flash drive um, save it somewhere else maybe you want to take it into your accountant on a flash drive you know or save it to google or whatever you want to do on that but the save versus save as takes on two different jobs after you've given the file already a name. Okay. So again, I, I, there's so much more that I'm going to cover in the next one, but I wanted to at least start this out. I wanted to make sure I introduced myself to you guys and then just kind of um, show you just how easy it is to really just type in information and do the formulas. As long as you've got the steps written down for the formulas, it, it's really quite easy. Yeah, I think that that's a really good thing to reiterate is that um, this is the uh, very base basics and you've got several of these coming up to build on because it definitely um, could get complicated, but it can also get really fun. And I wish that I had had this, you know, in high school and they could have done calculations for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and remember the keyboard shortcuts, you guys, Excel, Microsoft made this really easy. Your control key on your keyboard in combination with a letter and, and the letters are pretty easy. Control B is for bold. Control S, S is for save. Control I is for italics. Control U is for underline. Control P is for print. So really, I mean, anytime you wanna do anything, more than likely the first letter of what you wanna do in combination with the control key is the, is the keyboard shortcut. So that saved me. That really saved me. And this undo, those two things really saved me when I first started learning Excel. 
Well, I'm just getting ready to let everybody know that they can um, type in chat. Um, you can post in questions um, or you are welcome to um, or raise your hand. And if you raise hand, we can unmute you and you can live ask your question. Um, so we can definitely do that. What are some of the things? So go ahead and and uh, let us know kind of what industries you are in, um, what you're using it for. You've shared a little bit about that. If you have a very specific stumper for Chris, let's put mm -hmm. her on the on the spot today. <clears throat> and something that really maybe has stumped you. Let us know what that is, because I guarantee you there are no silly questions. Everybody no. has the same questions. Once you ask them, like, oh yeah, that's, I needed that question too. So um, we'll give you a minute to do that. And Chris, I'm curious about what some of the stumpers at this level that you've seen in the past, because I know that you've taught this class over and over and over again. What are some of the things that, um, that comes up over, and over again as a question or a challenge? I, I think the two key things that I get a lot of questions on is um, the symbols for each one of these formulas. I get that question a lot. Just remember, and that's why I put it up here like this, for subtraction, it's just the dash or the hyphen. Mm -hmm. For multiplication, it's the asterisk. And then for division, it's just the slash. And then another thing are um, the keyboard sh shortcuts with selecting a group. So Remember I, I told you the control key will select non-adjacent cells. The shift key will select everything within two cells. So earlier you guys saw me just come up here with my fat white plus and highlight these cells to select them. And I maybe wanted to change them to currency. Well, what you can do, let me undo this. So they're just basic numbers. You can also click on the first cell that you wanna select, hold down your shift key and click on the last cell that you want to select. And then you can make those changes. Why that's such a stumper is because usually your spreadsheets go on and on and on. And so I'll have a lot of people say, okay, I'm, I'm going to highlight and I go down here and then it's, it's jumping too far. Then I've got to go back up, see how it's jumping around. So what I'll do a lot of times is just say, well, just click on the first cell that you want to select, scroll down, until you see that last cell that you want to select. And let's just say it's going to be D30 for me. Hold down your shift key on your keyboard and click. And it selects everything within those two. I get that question. And I also have a lot of people wasting a lot of time on saying, okay, I want this number. I'm going to click on that to be red. And then I want this number to be red. And they do a lot of back and forth. Again, the keyboard shortcut for that is you hold down, you click on the first cell, hold down the control key, and I can click on three cells at once, and maybe I want to change it to, I'm going to just click on the drop down arrow there, maybe purple. So the shift key allows you to select in between two cells. The controls key allows you to select non-adjacent cells, which comes in really handy for formulas. Those are my two main stumpers. Amy. That is definitely one that I come. I remember the very first time that I uh, came up on this. Oh, oh, we've got, how did you click and drag a formula again? You want to go over that okay. again real quick? Yes. Here, let me, I'm going to delete these, delete this. I'm just highlighting and hitting the delete keys. So I did this formula right here and I'm going to click on the, the cell that the formula is in. And you see, again, the key with the mouse symbol is it's got to be at the bottom right hand corner of that cell. And it's a solid black plus. Yours might not be as thick as mine. It might be a thinner black plus just because I made my mouse a little bit bigger. But then you just when you see that symbol, I'm going to hold down my left mouse button, click, hold and drag it down. It fills it in. So cool. Click, hold and drag it down. Let me just highlight those again and delete them. So one of the first, the first time that this happened, um, I was very, it's when um, I put in a formula and it calculated something and a bunch of hashtag or number signs came up. <laughs> yep, probably what happened. So let me, I'm gonna do this first um, subtraction. Let me say that I forgot to hit the equal symbol. Okay, so, so I'm not gonna hit that. I'm just going to go ahead and say I want B3 minus B5. Now, if I don't hit the equal, 
that's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. If I do something that's an error at all, it will have the little number number symbol and it will be an error. So it's just indicating that that is not a formula. One of so the I don't other, know what form. Well, and one of the other things I found was if the number is too big. I mean, we all want extra zeros in the numbers, right? But if the number is too big to fit into the cell and you have to make it bigger, it will show up as numbers. And I, it took me a minute to figure that out to realize I just needed to make it bigger to fit how big the number was. Amy, that's a good point. I'm so glad you brought that up because notice right here, you know how I, again, that double-headed black arrow, if I get on the line for a column, if I want to make it smaller or larger, but notice if I make it too small, that's what Amy is talking about. You've got that number symbol right there. All that's telling you is, hey guys, the cell's not big enough to show the whole number. So you're going to have to come up here And again, the mouse symbol is key. I'm right there up on the column headings. I see the double-headed black mouse and I'm gonna click hold and drag it over to the right. Don't forget to, you can double click here. Let me take this back. And again, I don't wanna confuse you, but you guys might do this and say, okay, correct, what did I just do? If I get on that line up there and I double click, it will automatically make it just one space bigger than what that that column has to be. So again, instead of clicking, holding and dragging, I just came up here and I positioned my mouse up there on the gray area mm-hmm. on right on the line and I double clicked. The same thing with formulas. Remember I told you that there's a shortcut way to doing everything. If my data goes all the way down in a, to row 100, Again, I probably don't want to click, hold, and drag all the way down, but I can get on that autofill button right there and double click, and it will copy the formula all the way down. So there's a million and one of those shortcuts in Excel. That's why I said, anytime you feel like you're just kind of going back and forth and wasting time, please reach out to me because there's almost always a shortcut of how to do that. Let me show you again. We have a great question and um, I'm excited to say we have a 14 year old entrepreneur on here with us today, starting a t-shirt company. Awesome. Um, That's awesome. um, If you can subtract two different cells, Um, she wants you to just, if you go over that again, subtracting the two different cells. I sure will. So again, step number one, you're going to click inside of the empty cell where you want your answer to be. Step number two, you're gonna hit the equal key on your keyboard. That's indicating to Excel that you're starting a formula. And then with my mouse, I'm just gonna come over and click on the first cell that I wanna subtract. And notice it's disco dancing around that cell. Then the control key is is really key here. I'm gonna hold down the control key, click on the second cell that I wanna subtract, let up off the control key and then hit enter. Oh, what did I do there? Undo, undo, undo. There There we go. I accidentally did the comma instead. So what I did there, let me escape again. What I did there is I could tell there's my error. And so I came up here to see what I did wrong in my formula bar. And I didn't mean to, but I I, um, had typed in the, the comma. I need to do the subtraction. All I did was I typed in the wrong key on my keyboard. Yeah, but what's in the when it did was, that, you can see it now it's 22 the in the hole. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Great. Well, are there any other um, specific questions? We'd love to have them. Anything you need to see again or anything that you're really struggling with? Um, organizing, um, you know, you talked about, you were talking about kind of at the top, how, you know, using colors and all these other things seem silly, but when you are looking at a sheet of numbers, Sometimes yes. differentiating and splitting th- some things up with just some colors is really, really helpful. Um, and so some of the things that seem um, about aesthetics are really, they are part of the functionality of, um, of what you're doing in Excel. They really are. do help kind of break things up and, and make it look a little bit. So Chris, tell us a little bit about what um, the next classes are gonna entail and what the next classes are gonna cover. And again, okay, so the, we're still open for questions. We're not shutting you down. If you come up with anything, go for it, throw it out there. Um, but tell us what's coming up. 
Absolutely. And you guys, and don't forget, if you're working on a spreadsheet and you have questions, you know, Amy it gave you my email address. Just email me your question, attach your spreadsheet, and I can help you walk through that stuff too. But the next class, what I'll do is I'll do a review of the basics. I'm going to do a little bit more advanced formatting. We're going to do some more, uh, more advanced formulas. But what I also want to show you is I want to show you charts and pivot tables. And those two um, features inside of Excel really visualize the information that you're trying to, to create. And so, like Amy said, you know, there's so many different ways of doing that. You can format, make it yellow, you can make it bold, you can make it bigger. But there's also so many features in here for you guys to make it more of a visual. You know, for the 14 year old for her t shirt um, company, you might want to see, you know, how many t shirts at, at, that you're selling, um, maybe in different colors or maybe. Um, how many you're selling over the quarter. A, a chart is really good for you guys to see kind of the piece of the pie. It, it, what's a bit. So you can tell here too by just coming here, but it's kind of neat to see it in more visual. But um, the next class, I'm really going to leave a lot open for, for questions because especially for you guys that are returning, you're probably going to jump in now. You're going to have a lot of questions um, come that second class. So so I'll just kind of, and I'm, I'm really good at customizing as we go. If one of you guys wants to know more about charts, we'll, ju we'll just jump in more to the chart part. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we definitely want you to stay in touch in the meantime and send questions. Um, I've let you know how to become a client if you're not already. And again, that is no cost to you. We're underwritten by the university, the SBA and other granting organizations. So um, we are just here for you and uh, sent you. I can't make it any more clear uh, by sending Chris's information on a regular basis <laughs> that she is there for you so to, um, to get in touch with her. And that would be great. Um, in the meantime, you can find a full listing of our workshops. I'm just going to blast you with a bunch of links right now, um, letting, letting you know how you can find us. Um, everything is at sbtdc.uark.edu, and um, you can sign up for notifications or become a client. We also post on social media, so please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and again, just stay in touch. We really appreciate all of you being here, and um, keep an eye out at our website for Chris's um, follow-up upcoming classes what are do you know what your um upcoming dates are chris i think i have them here july somewhere. i believe the next one is july 1st mm -hmm. so um yep july 1st july and 4th. that will be yes that will be the um let me see here that'll be the closest great that'll be the closest one yep that'll be excel excel two so be sure but again you guys now have me as, as your excel consultant so just <laughs> holler at me before Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Chris. And thank you everyone for being here. And we will see you again next time. Great. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye.